Hey pals, I'm here today to talk about three fantasy novels that I recently read and enjoyed. Following this video I will be doing another video talking about the I think seven or eight fantasy and sci-fi novels that I've started this year and given up on. I am trying to read lots more books that bring me joy this year, it was one of my 2021 goals and I find that fantasy brings me lots of joy but I also find that I DNF a lot of it because a lot of fantasy is fast paced when I like slow paced books, plot focused when I like character focused books and more focused on the world building which I do enjoy in fantasy than the writing style but I also like the writing style to be really descriptive and beautiful. So an awful lot of fantasy just doesn't work for me. But when I find my niche in the genre, I really, really love it. And at this point, like no one has even come to the point of Robin Hobb, but that is my, my ultimate aim to find somebody who even comes a little bit close to how much I love Robin Hobb's books. So I've got three books to talk about, and I'm gonna talk about them in order of enjoyment. This first one is Empire of Zan by Tasha Suri, and I gave this one three stars. So I thought this book was a, a YA novel, and actually it's marketed as an adult fantasy. I would, however, say that it's probably a good entry point to adult fantasy if you've only read YA fantasy before, because the character is fairly young and it reads in some ways um, a little bit like YA fantasy in terms of the romance plotline. And I would also say this may be a good entry point for people who just haven't read fantasy before and want to give it a go because this world building isn't like super complicated. So this is set in a, uh, a desert inspired world which I enjoy because I haven't read a ton of that. You probably know that lots of fantasy is focused on medieval Europe type settings and we open with a young woman who is the daughter of I think some sort of like head of his of his state like he's not the emperor but he's like one of the emperor's men who runs this region and she is actually the daughter of a woman he was with who he wasn't married to who is looked at as um, part of a race of people that are disrespected and the the reigning people her father being one of them invaded this this area and her mother was one of the original inhabitants and when she was fairly young, her mother left her father and left her and her sister behind um, with her father. And they're now being raised by like a not very nice stepmother. The, the plot really starts kicking off when she is approached by a group of people who wish for her to marry one of the men they bring with them. She is involved in these people, it eventually leads to her going to, to live in the middle of the desert in a um, sort of religious type setting and she has a sort of magical ability which is linked to her mother's people, it's this ability that is frowned upon and um, part of a religion that's frowned upon and it turns out that these people who she's been sent to live with um, want to utilise that ability in some way and her and the man who she has been betrothed to are somehow being used by this group of people. So it feels a little bit like cultish, it's not a particularly nice setting. So what I enjoyed, it's a very slow pace, which is something I enjoy. And I felt like the writing style, the descriptions of the landscape and the buildings and the clothes was really good, really detailed, so I could picture everything. And I was quite enjoying this, but my problem problems with this book are that the the magic system is something to do with her religion she can do a, a dance which sort of calls on spirits of the desert I'm really simplifying this because it's hard to explain and I felt like the author designed a magic system which allowed her to to sort of make up what she wanted as she went along like the magic system didn't feel that structured it didn't feel like it had its own rules and limitations so it felt like the author could just change it slightly to have a twist in the plot or have something happen the way she wanted it to which I found quite frustrating. As a fantasy reader I appreciate magic systems where you understand them fully and you know where the limits are. This felt like a little bit airy-fairy like she hadn't properly explained it um, I, I found that when they were doing these dances and calling on the spirits I enjoyed the way those scenes were written but I never fully understood it and I never felt like I knew where the limitations were so that bothered me. I also felt like the romantic plot line as I said felt a bit YA and by that I mean a bit tropey. 
she doesn't know this guy for very long and I don't really want to spoil anything but there is an element of her being like a captive in this location and I don't know how believable I found the building of the relationship between the two of them. I also felt that for quite a slow paced novel I didn't really feel like there was much character development or like I truly felt for the characters and whilst reading this I didn't want you know the main characters to die but I also wouldn't have been like that upset had one of them died which is you know not a great thing to say is it? I feel like you should really care you should really want these characters to survive this awful experience and I felt a level of indifference. So I'm unsure if I'm going to carry on with the next one. I have had a look at what it's about and I think it could perhaps be a bit more interesting than this one. So if you've read both of them, let me know. So I gave this three stars and um, I enjoyed it. It was, it was an easy read, but I didn't find it super engaging. I do know she has a, a new book coming out this year, I think called The Jasmine Throne, and I'll definitely carry on with her work. Now this was her debut. I think debut fantasy novels are usually pretty hard to, you know, you have to build up um, your ability to be able to create this entire world. Um, you know, that's a difference with fantasy compared to like realistic fiction. You have to create a world, a magic system, a geography, politics. Um, and that's obviously difficult and this is her debut um, so I enjoyed it but I didn't love it. The next one I'm going to talk about I heard Chris over the channel Chris's Bookish Cauldron talk about and I love Chris's channel and I particularly watch out for his fantasy book recommendations because I know he's enjoyed um, books that I've really enjoyed so I always keep an eye out um, and this one is City of Lies by Sam Hawke this is the first book in a duology again and the duology is called um, Poison War Duology and I decided to give this one a go this month in particular because Sam Hawke is an Australian novelist and it's Aussie April so I thought that would be a good time to try it out. It's around 600 pages and I did read it in four days so it was a very quick read, very fast paced. So I'm going to try and explain this one. This is set in a capital city that's home to around um, 10,000 residents and we open with the, the heir to the, the throne, the chancellor's seat and his um, companion who is his best friend but also happens to be trained in um, detecting poisons in food and drink so he has been raised on lots of poisons he's built up an immunity and he can recognize the scent or the taste of them in food and drink so he eats all food um, or drink that is passed to his friend before his friend eats it in case of assassination and at the start of the novel they get back from travels and they come in and the day they arrive um, the Chancellor and the Chancellor's poison taster, so our main character's uncle, are both killed. And so suddenly um, these two characters, Tain and Joven, are now the, the Chancellor and um, the Chancellor's like right hand man and poison taster and they know that the other two have been assassinated by poison so there's like high stakes. And within like hours of that happening all the messenger birds are killed so they can't notify anyone out on all the estates who grow all food and then a rebel army starts approaching and their army happens to be sent somewhere else very far away to quell a rebellion so they're fucked like they've just lost um, their chancellor they can't send messages to anyone they can't get their army back and there's a rebel army approaching and they have absolutely no clue why Okay, so this novel is told from two perspectives, one being the, the poison taster, um, Joven, and the other being his sister, Kalina. So Kalina was actually supposed to be the poison taster because she is the, the elder. Kalina didn't become the poison taster because she has a uh, condition which sounds similar to chronic fatigue but is never named. And so she doesn't have the ability to taste poisons because it will kill her. She can't build up a tolerance to them, or an immunity I should say. And from that point on, this novel is absolutely non-stop. I mean, there is not a single page where these characters pause for breath. I guess you follow, this must be over the course of like a month, and it is relentless. There's so much intrigue, everybody is like suspicious, you don't know who to trust, um, and I had two characters who I really liked who are quite central characters and I preferred them to the, the main three, the Chancellor, the Poison Taster and the Poison Taster's sister, um, but I was sure that one of them had to be the villain, um, so that was quite interesting, like really liking them but also being sure that it had to be one of them. So 
positives. I think the the world building is really great with one limitation. I was a little bit unsure of the like the weather and terrain of this country, but I think that's excusable because it was mainly based in the city state, so you don't really see the outside world. So yeah, I thought it was really well developed in that I could understand the politics, I could really understand the history. There was hints of a magic system which also felt fairly well explained and I thought like the economics and the um, politics and social issues were also well explained. So I enjoyed all that. I think for a debut this was pretty strong on that front. I also enjoyed the plot. Like I wish it had been significantly slower but I did enjoy it and I was intrigued to see what would happen and I do want to read the next one. My issues with this are, I don't know, there's one plot element in this which made sense for Kalina the sister to have her own chapters but other than that it's really not necessary like it could all have been told from the brother's perspective and what I found difficult is is that I don't think she distinguished their voices at all they read like exactly the same person other than the fact that the sister has this chronic fatigue so she'll mention um you know how she's feeling and how she has to like bear in mind her strength and, and perhaps avoid some situations and the brother has something which sounds very much like obsessive compulsive disorder and so there's points when he comments on that but if they weren't mentioning those things then sometimes I'd have to flip back and remind myself who was telling that chapter because there's just nothing to distinguish their voices they don't have different um like speaking patterns they don't have a different rhythm before absolutely nothing different so I felt like that was a shame. I also felt like, similarly to the last one, I wouldn't have really been bothered if some of these people would have died because I didn't feel super connected to them. And I think the reason for that is the plot is so relentless. Like, it does not hold up. It does not pause for breath, ever. I'd say, other than the first page when you're being introduced to them, everything else is plot. There's just so much shit that goes down. And, these characters are super inept at running the city they've not got a clue they've been incredibly privileged and spoiled and they've never had to think for a second about what any of their citizens how they feel about the life they're living and i just kept thinking pretty annoying that you don't understand this and you're doing a pretty bad job of looking after everything so i did enjoy this it was um obviously very um page turnery because it was just non-stop i'd give this about three and a half stars um, I also, like, this is called a Poison War novel, like I said, and at the start of every chapter there is a description of a poison, and that felt a bit pointless as well, like, they were sometimes linked to the chapter, sometimes not, and I just didn't really see the point in it, so, yeah, I enjoyed it, I didn't love it. There's that one. And the third and final book I'm going to talk about, which I really, really enjoyed and had so much fun reading this, is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. So this is a bit of a surprise for me because this is YA fantasy and I usually prefer adult fantasy. And this is also, I guess, what you'd call urban fantasy in that it is set in our world but has magical elements to it. I usually prefer higher epic fantasy, which is what the previous two were, you know, when a whole world and a whole political system and different creatures and religions and everything has been created. And this isn't that, but I had so much fun reading this. This one is around 500 pages, but in this edition, the font is super small. So it's quite a chunky book and I just couldn't put this down. I was having so much fun and um, it just makes me really happy thinking about this one. This opens after um, 16 year old Brie has lost her mother. Her mother um, got killed in a car accident and Brie has been accepted to early college when she's 16, which I don't think is something that actually exists in the US, but it does in this book. She goes there with her friend and like in the first or second chapter, she's at some sort of like outdoor rave and she sees what appears to be a like demon creature come out of this like portal and she sees a group of teenagers fighting this demon creature and it all looks completely like magical and unbelievable. And she very quickly gets caught up in this group of people and you find this out super fast that this group of teenagers are a secret society within the college and they are the descendants of 
the Knights of the Round Table. So one of them is actually a descendant of Arthur himself. Brie remembers something about her mother's death which has been troubling her and she thinks could be linked to this group of people. So she gets involved with a uh, young guy who is actually the descendant of Arthur um, and has been like spurning his inheritance. He doesn't want to be involved with this group of people anymore um, but he gets involved again in order to help Brie. I thought the, the commentary on the um, secret society being um, incredibly elitist and very clearly racist was really well done. I really enjoyed Brie as a character, um, I really enjoyed all the other characters surrounding Brie. I will say like each of the the knights of the round table has somebody who's like their, their second um, and they're all named and then they also have loads of people who are called pages and I didn't understand the structure of that completely and also there was a lot of names so sometimes I was like who are they a page for like who are they the night of I don't know um I just sort of let that wash over me so just um when you read it don't feel like what the hell am I just not following this because I think a lot of people who've read this book have said that as well um so this book has loads of tropey elements, right? Loads of things that you see all the time in YA fantasy. There is a bad boy, and I actually burst out laughing when I read this bit. Um, you're introduced to the bad boy on page 17. He is um, involved in the Knights of the Round Table, but he is actually the descendant of Merlin, and he is, like I said, the bad boy. And this is how he's described. He draws, I mean, they all draw, don't they? He is unsettlingly beautiful. His face is aristocratic and sharp, framed by high, pale cheekbones. The rest of his body is born from shadows. Black jacket, black pants, and ink black hair that falls over his forehead and calls just below gouged ears bearing small black rubber plucks. He can't be more than 18, but something about his features doesn't belong to a teenager. The cut of his jaw, the line of his nose, his stillness. I cracked up. Um, I just remembered being like 14 years old and loving YA fantasy that had these like bad boy characters who were always incredibly pale, always a bit gothy and they always had a bit of hair like curled on their forehead. So um, I appreciated that. I thought it was quite amusing. And what I will say, there is a lot of tropes. There's a bit of a love triangle. Um, you know, there's a person realising that they have loads of magic, there's um, an element of the story that's a bit like a chosen one. I was thinking this is pretty tropey, however, once you get further into the book, all of the tropes are explained away by the magic system, which I obviously can't spoil, but she's very clearly nodding to these tropes, she's very clearly aware that she's using them, and there's a little bit of irony there, and then it's quite delightful when you see her tie all together and just allow everything to make sense with the tropes, so I really enjoyed that. I gave this four stars, like, I loved reading it, but I will say, I think we probably needed a bit more time with Brie in her, like, real life at the college, and um, this was also incredibly fast paced, so much stuff happens very, very quickly, and I just felt we probably needed a few more moments of um, quietness with the main characters. Um, and I also felt, like I said, that some elements of the magic system were a bit confusing and um, it could have done with having a bit more space in the novel to properly get the readers to grips with those elements. But um, I really enjoyed this, I had so much fun reading this and I really recommend it. So do feel free to let me know if you've read any of these three books and what you thought of them and also feel free to let me know if you have any other fantasy recommendations that you think I might enjoy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!